plastic. Hello my beautiful friends and welcome to the very first Nintendo News Roundup since E3 2021 was a thing and what an E3 it was. Nintendo Direct, whole big huge thing. Um, so we got a whole lot to talk about here, but I'm not just gonna be recapping exactly what happened in the Direct because I kinda already did that in the Direct discussion. Um, but I will be touching on each thing and also talking about news stories and details and things that have come out since then. So, you know, there's, there's more to talk about than just touching on the headlines and then all the other usual news stories of the week as well. So let's get started. The Direct, of course, started out with a Smash reveal. This was Kazuya from Tekken. And uh, I got in a lot of trouble for suggesting that Banjo was a bigger thing than Tekken. I... I know Tekken is a bigger series overall. Banjo's barely had any games. I just meant for like the hype. It was the Banjo. It was the childhood dream. It was the big, the big pie in the sky. It's Microsoft. No one thought it would happen. But people have informed me that there were reasons that people also didn't know if a Tekken character would happen too. So that's what makes it more exciting. And I'll admit that's a thing that I didn't know about. Um, let's just all agree. Smash is cool. <laughs> Moving on. For me personally, the big highlight of the Direct was the reveal of Metroid 5, Metroid Dread. Metroid Dread is something that Nintendo has been working on for a super long time, or you know, it, it kind of went into development heck and didn't happen, but then they brought it back. This is the official, actual continuation of the mainline 2D Metroid games, which is incredible because we haven't had that in like 19 years, which is really awesome. Uh, I was very, if you didn't see, I was very excited. Yo, Schiller, can we, can we get a, uh, 0.25 second uh, clip from there. Yeah! Yep, that's the gist of it. Um, and so some more details have come out since then. Um, they revealed two Amiibo, you know, the uh, the Emmy and Sam's Amiibo for the game. The Amiibo functionality has been revealed. And fortunately, I mean, like, we had two reasons to be a little bit worried about this because one, we just had Skyward Sword Amiibo, which locked an actual like nice mechanic, like quality of life mechanic behind the Amiibo. And then on Samus Returns on the 3DS, um, that one locked an entire difficulty mode behind the Amiibo, which is awful, awful trashy bad. But fortunately, this right here is the usual benign stuff. You know, one of them gives you a energy expansion, and then after that, every time you tap it, you get your energy filled once a day. And then the same with missiles for the other one. So, you know, pretty normal. It does seem that people are having a hard time getting their hands on this in the special edition and all that, which is um, not good. Scalper is bad. Uh, however, I will say, apparently the game has been topping the Amazon charts, uh, at least for a bit, and that's uh, and that's not just the special edition. Some people are like, is it just that because scalpers want to get them all? Um, it seems that the, the base game is also trending pretty darn high, which is really, really exciting because Metroid really, oh, it needs to sell. It needs to sell so bad, so fingers crossed there. Series producer Yoshio Sakamoto has, uh, you know, said some stuff surrounding the game. He told everyone that this would be the end of the, like, narrative arc between Samus and the Metroids and stuff, but then later he clarified that this was not the end of Samus' story and even said that they have some sort of additional chapter thing planned. And uh, we don't know if that means DLC for this game, if it means Metroid 6, if it means something else entirely. We're not really sure, but basically he said it's not like the last Metroid game or anything. Uh, and then in addition to that, Nintendo revealed that they are still working on Prime 4. No surprises there, but I don't know. It's always nice to get the confirmation. It hasn't been scrapped again. I'd love to talk about Metroid all day, but we must move on. Other highlights from the show. Shin Megami Tensei 5 got a big new trailer, got the release date that had been leaked before, but whatever, the game actually looks pretty darn cool. I don't know, big open world, fighting monsters and stuff, looks neato. Advance Wars Reboot Camp, a remake of the first two Advance Wars games, but on the Switch, looks pretty cool. We're gonna have a talk about that $60 price tag later. <laughs> We're gonna have a talk about it, but we're not, not talking about it right now, uh, because right now, it's uh, it's awesome. It's Advance Wars come back. I don't know why Nintendo put it down for so long, um, but here it is. They have confirmed that it will have online play, which is good, especially for $60. <laughs> it better have online play. Um, and also, it is being developed by Way Forward, the very, very talented developers behind the Shantae games. And that is just awesome. I feel like there were rumors about them working uh, more closely with Nintendo some time back. And and uh, I don't know, that's just cool. They're really cool. Advance Wars is cool. Everything's cool. What else? Mario Party Superstars, a big collection of all of the, some of the most popular boards and mini games from across the series. At first, I wasn't sure how this was different from the uh, top 100 on the 3DS. Um, but everyone told me apparently that was 
literally just mini games and no boards. So this is basically like a good version of that. So that's very exciting, I'm sure, especially so for uh, longtime series fans. Uh, lots of online multiplayer stuff, really good everything there. I mean, just everything they've outlined about the online sounds pretty great. And excitingly, apparently, Mario Party Superstars is the first game Nintendo has ever localized into Brazilian Portuguese, which is just like awesome. I've been seeing there's these this big fan campaign on Twitter. Everybody's trying to like raise awareness and try to get Nintendo to localize more games into Brazilian Portuguese and good luck. <laughs> luck to you. I really hope Nintendo does. The more, you know, Obviously goes without saying, the more localizations, the better. WarioWare Get It Together, a new Wario game. Not too much to say about it beyond that, except it's a new WarioWare game. So if you like WarioWare games, that's pretty cool. Then the last part of the show was dedicated to Zelda. They showed off the uh, first wave of Age of Calamity DLC, which is apparently out. I need to find time to play it. I want to play it super bad, and I just got so much else, so much else on my plate. Um, you know, I'd, I'd say that the two major takeaways were a playable Guardian character and also Zelda on the Master Cycle. Very, very cool. Um, during that little section of the uh, of the presentation, Aonuma also revealed the Zelda Game & Watch, which is cool in itself because it's got three games on it instead of just one, um, but then it's not cool because he also revealed that that was the extent of their anniversary plans for Zelda, and they don't have any other games or campaigns planned, which is disappointing, but I already dedicated an entire video to that, so go watch that if you want to hear me complain about not getting enough Zelda stuff. Then we had the Breath of the Wild 2 trailer. It was very cool, and um, and, and again, we have some little tidbits surrounding that. Bill Trinan was uh, doing interviews and, and Treehouse stuff, and he kind of gave us a couple of tidbits there. Um, he says that, like, yeah, we're seeing a lot of, like, thematic links to old games, um, but the game does stand on its own. He says, especially as more stuff comes out, we'll see. It's not, you know, it's not Twilight Princess 2. It's not Majora's Mask 2. It's really just its own thing, which I mean, that makes sense. I never really anticipated something like that. Interestingly enough, they also said they couldn't reveal the name because the name, like the subtitle, you know, The Legend of Zelda colon something, um, he said, because that itself would give away too much about the story. And so, I mean, there go all of my my predictions, you know, Breath of the Void and all that, like, vague stuff. Um, so apparently it will be something specific. Breath of the Wild was very vague, um, but this... All I can imagine is that if it's talking about time, there seem to be time elements here. So if it's, like, another thing of time or something like that, um, that could reveal something. Uh, but who knows? Outside of Nintendo, but related to Nintendo, at the Ubisoft Forward presentation, we got the full reveal, gameplay, cinematic, and all that stuff for Mario and Rabbids Sparks of Hope. I also did a whole entire video on this, so I won't go into it, but it looks incredibly, just really, really cool, and I'm really, really excited to play it. Can you imagine what it would have been like if that was revealed exclusively in the Nintendo Direct? Like, man, it was already a good Direct, but if, they, if you just, like, if you just factor that in, as like Nintendo news, like I'm trying to do, that just makes the show that much better. We've got another Bayonetta 3 update. It is uh, coming along. <laughs> it's coming along smoothly uh, as usual, but it does seem that Hideki Kamiya is getting pretty annoyed. <laughs> he took to Twitter um, to say like specifically, he thinks that it's just kind of reckless and silly to start verbally wondering if the game is, you know, being canceled or whatever. And I can see that, absolutely. You're working on a thing, you've been working on it for four years or whatever, you're doing it, you're not allowed to say anything more because Nintendo, your boss, doesn't want you to, you just, so you're just not able to, but you're still plugging away at it, it's going great, and every single time an event comes and goes without anyone seeing it, people are like, is it canceled? Is it canceled? Do you guys know what you're doing? And so I can see it. He's pretty annoyed. Give the guy a break. Just stop, <laughs> stop wondering if it's canceled. Just be patient. It's hard to be patient. It's weird. It's weird that they revealed it so far ahead of time when it seems like they maybe hadn't even gotten started yet. Who knows, but yeah. I get the frustration, but this poor guy, <laughs> give him a break. In the direct, Nintendo confirmed that Mario Golf Super Rush would be updated with, uh, you know, free DLC, free 
um, courses and characters and things after launch, which is no surprise. That's what happened to Mario Tennis Aces, but uh, it's nice to get confirmation. You got a little, like a new Donk City course there. Very cute. According to most polls, Microsoft, quote, won E3 with a more exciting show. I think it's all debatable, but I also haven't dug into that show. I've been meaning to. I need to like go see every single announcement. See, um, Point is, though, despite what people thought about the presentations, apparently Nintendo won when it came to peak viewers. Um, they came in at 3.1 million at the peak, uh, which beat everybody else. So I don't know. That many more people were tuning in to see what Nintendo was doing, which is pretty fun. I know it's not actually competition. It's just fun. We call it friendly competition, you know? Couple interesting things happened uh, before the Direct. Apparently Nintendo of Japan was telling everybody, hey, um, no co-streaming the Direct. Basically, they did, didn't mind reactions and things afterward. They didn't mind if you streamed your reaction to it while it was happening, but they didn't want people to stream the Direct itself while they were doing it. I'm still a little unclear. I feel like people were still able to do it here or maybe not, because this was Nintendo Japan was saying this. Um, but then Twitch themselves came out and said, hey, we're not gonna do it either. So it's like really, really slightly worrisome that Nintendo would be a little weird about that because, I mean, you know, we don't want them to be one of the ones <laughs> that's weird about that. I know Ubisoft has been kind of weird about that recently, but at the same time, like, I kind of get it. And you know, they didn't copyright flag me for any of the stuff afterward. They said anyone can do anything afterward. They just didn't want people co-streaming the event itself during the stream. After that, everything goes. And yeah, I can kind of get that. They want as many eyes as possible on just the stream itself, not, I don't know, not being diluted by all, the, all these other people in their commentary or whatever. I don't know. It's just one of those things where I guess I get it. Apparently Nintendo of America was also sending out break in case of extreme excitement packages uh, to Nint Nintendo brand ambassadors, just these little this little thing, I mean, which got people pretty hyped before, like, is there gonna be some kind of crazy excitement? And this cute little thing, and you break it, and everybody got like a little custom hoodie or whatever. I did not get one of these, for sadly, I am no longer part of the brand ambassador program. A lot of people are, like most of the people I know that were in the program aren't anymore. They kind of shut it down. I haven't really talked about it. They shut it down, but then they, <laughs> They wanted to fire a bunch of people, but they didn't want to fire them, so they instead said, we're shutting down this program, and then we're starting a new one, and you're not invited. <laughs> it's basically what happened. I don't know, this was last year. I'm, I don't know, I'm over it. I'm surprised I ever got it in the first place, honestly. But I am a little jealous. Those hoodies are pretty nice. Pretty nice, got the name on it and everything. Although I got a, I got a weird body shape. I can't, like, hoodies like that, they don't really... <laughs> They don't really fit on me. I don't know if you noticed. My arms are kind of weird. Moving on. After the Direct, Nintendo shares dropped by 6%, uh, presumably because they didn't announce any new hardware. And um, it's one of those things where, you know, it's a little silly. There's always these little raises and drops in share value. Um, they're very knee-jerky, their reactions. But it's a normal part of the process, and it'll probably readjust itself if it hasn't already. Um, but I do think that's funny. It's very indicative of just like shareholders and the, the big market in particular, especially people who like don't really, they don't get the games. They don't really understand the games. They just see a tangible thing like hardware because everywhere else in the industry, it's like, oh, what's the new iPhone, you know, the whatever. So like they really wanted Nintendo to do the new Switch. And then when they didn't, then I'm sure some people were like, all right, I'm out of here. So it's kind of interesting. We've got new information on Pokemon Unite. I didn't really dig into it very much. I'm not, uh, I don't know, it's just kind of a thing. <laughs> I don't really know many people who are that interested in Pokemon Unite, so I'll just, I'll bring it here to tell you they showed off some stuff. Um, apparently it is hitting the Switch in July, so not too far from now. Um, but then mobile users have to wait a couple extra months. It's hitting mobile in September. Pokemon Company has revealed the next uh, m major mechanic for the TCG. It's uh, putting four cards together to make one big giant card, which is, uh, I'm kind of surprised they haven't done it already, honestly. It, it's, I mean, it just, it just makes sense. And <laughs> it's a little scary though, now with all the card shortages. Oh boy, now to get like one Pokemon, you gotta get, you gotta get four cards for one Pokemon. Oh boy, that Mewtwo is sweet though, isn't it? Final bit of Pokemon news, a big event called Bidoof Breakout is coming to Pokemon Go. There's gonna be Bidoofs all over the place. I don't play the game. I don't know what that would do or why that's cool, but go Bidoof, I guess.
GameStop's doing a cool thing. If you buy $30 in Zelda stuff, or if you trade in, I presume that amount, toward a Switch, you get a cool Zelda anniversary poster. Nice to see someone is <laughs> doing Zelda anniversary stuff, Nintendo. That's a cool poster. Lego Mario is apparently just very successful because it is getting more stuff. It's getting 10 more character packs, as well as a lot of other new stuff. Um, on Nintendo Life, they seemed hesitant to reveal one of uh, the big play sets that's coming out. I don't really know, like, the Lego culture or whatever, so I don't want to spoil anything either, but it was a big, really cool thing. Tons of Lego stuff. The Switch has been the number one selling console in the U.S. for 30 months now. 30 months as of May. Very impressive. That's almost 32 months. Amazing. Uh, so last week we talked about how uh, Nintendo rolled out an update for the Switch and they were afraid it was going to cause some errors, so they rolled it back. But then they rolled it back out again and then people were getting those errors. So no one was really sure why Nintendo rolled it out. And all this time later, it is still a thing. It is still a problem. Lots and lots of people are still reporting very big issues with their Switches and downloading stuff. And Nintendo has not responded yet, so that's disappointing. Um, in fact, Kane, my editor, Kane, not your Schiller, two editors, the other one, Kane, you know him. He, now take this, it might not necessarily be the update. I don't want to like start a big, huge thing that says this update might brick your switch. Um, but he updated and it bricked his switch. <laughs> his switch is broken. It is, br he it said, do you want to update? He said, yeah, it broke. It won't turn on. And, uh, and even worse, he had to send it to, uh, send it to get repaired and it's not covered by the warranty and they want to charge him about the equivalent of 200 US bucks just to repair it. It's two thirds of the way to another switch. And again, I don't know if it's because of the update or what, but that stinks because he kind of uses that like for work to help me capture footage and stuff. And Nintendo is insisting that it's, his switch is basically held for ransom now. <laughs> he has to pay a whole bunch of money to get it back when he didn't do anything wrong and it just kind of broke on its own. So that's really disappointing. Really disappointing. Thank you, Nintendo. So I think a lot of people, myself included, were expecting some sort of Animal Crossing related thing at E3, mostly because all of the updates so far have been very small and we keep thinking like, is there gonna be like a big one that makes us actually like kind of excited to play the game again? And uh, wasn't it E3? No, literally nothing Animal Crossing related. Um, but Doug, Pow Doug, Pouser, Doug Bowser has gone on the record saying that more AC plans are in the future. I don't know why I read it the way I have it on my notes here. AC means Animal Crossing. More Animal Crossing stuff. It's coming. They're planning for more. We don't actually know what that means. We don't know if it is a big update or if it's just going to be more little, not super exciting stuff. But I don't know. Wait and see, I guess. And finally, as we knew would happen, People are going nuts with the Game Builder Garage. They're building all sorts of fun stuff. Zelda Boy 1 has done a whole bunch of stuff. There's like F-Zero and like, just, just look at all this. Look at this little montage Yo Schiller's putting in front of you here. All these, look how just like authentic they look. I'm super duper impressed. Um, additionally, Mr. Talida on Twitter uh, has recreated the 1996 Ocarina of Time tech demo. Like the little, the little, just a little town, like the Kakariko Village in the tech demo. And um, that's just cool. I don't know. It's pretty neato. And then finally, Masahiro Sakurai himself has gotten in on the action. He's not recreating anything, but he is just making his own games, which is a lot of fun that he's just legitimately getting into this game and making his own stuff. And he's made a little shooty game. And he even details like these specific mechanics about how the acceleration and the shooting are tied together. And when this happens, this happens. Um, that's fun. I can imagine that after designing something like Smash, this is like a relaxing, <laughs> just like a way to still work on a game, but in a very relaxing, low pressure way. It's fun to see him having fun. I'm glad he's having fun. Well, that is it for another edition of the Nintendo News Roundup. Please join me again next week when things presumably go back to normal. I don't know, slow down. It's It's been a big, crazy thing and I'm still feeling <laughs> quite tired from it. E3 is a lot of work. Um, but it's fun. We love to do it. We love to make these roundups. I love you. Have a good day. Goodbye.